All right, so let's start talking about solivation and the factors that affect it, okay? So first of all, what is sol, and I guess it's just solvation. I always like to say solivation for some reason. Solvation, okay? So solvation is the process of dissolving um uh what should we call it a solute into a solvent okay so that's all solvation really is okay uh and so the process of dissolving a solute into a solvent sounds pretty simple and that's because it really for the most part is uh there are some factors that can affect um these different types of solutions uh, that we'll talk about here in just a second. So solvation is this process. Now, we can measure the heat, okay, uh, of a, of solvation, okay? So basically the temperature change uh, when combining or when dissolving one solute into a solvent, okay? Um, and so when you're measuring, or uh, the measure, you measure the heat solvation, or the heat of solvation, you're essentially just gonna get this uh, heat of solution, okay? And this is just something you can use. But heat of solution is essentially just the energy change that occurs during solution formation. Okay, so nothing too crazy there, pretty simple. Um, there are three things that affect solvation, okay? I think I always said solivation because I thought solvation sounded too much like salvation. I don't know why, I always, but anyway, so there are three main factors that affect solvation. Okay, can anybody think of any things that would make um, dissolving something faster or be able to dissolve more? There's three main things. Temperature would make it faster. Did you say okay. mixing it? Yeah, if it's warmer, it'll dissolve faster. Okay, so you've got two of them already. So one of them is agitation, okay, which is gonna be anything like mixing uh, a solution. Okay, that's one thing that'll definitely affect it. Um, so any sort of agitation where you are actively uh, mixing in, I don't know why I wanna keep putting two mixing, two X's, mixing in solute to solvent manually okay so agitation is something obviously if you let something sit there it will slowly dissolve but over time it's gonna you know it'll just take a lot longer and sometimes you need the agitation to kind of stir stuff up uh ethan also said number two and this is probably the most uh important one is going to be temperature okay so the higher the temperature, the quicker um, solute dissolves, and the more solute dissolves. Okay, so we have a couple of different things there. Uh, there is one more thing. And I don't know you guys will get it, so I'll just go ahead and give it to you. The third thing is going to be surface area. Sorry, what? Pressure? Uh, pressure really only does it with gases more. It is, it is a factor in this, but kind of more along the lines of uh, 
just that if you put more pressure on something, it'll kind of like increase temperature. So pressure kind of is, but it's not a main factor, uh, at least not for when we're mixing solid solutes into solvents. When you're mixing gaseous solutes, uh, that is different. Pressure is a main thing there. Uh, but so surface area of solute. Okay, so imagine if you take a uh, glass of like hot tea and you're trying to mix in granulated sugar versus like a whole sugar cube, the sugar cube is going to take longer to dissolve. Okay, so um, the more surface area of solute, the quicker it dissolves. Okay, and this is why if you are making stuff in the lab and you've got uh, like making solutions in a lab, you've got really big crystal solute, you usually want to take a mortar and pestle and really grind that down. Okay, um, so those are kind of some important things. Does anybody have any questions about solvation right now? Cool. I'm glad that you guys don't. I think not that obviously I, you could be not understanding this, but I think most of you guys are understanding this. I don't. I don't think there's any problem that any of you guys would have with any of this. All right. Uh, is anybody like taking notes, or am I good to erase this? You're good. Okay. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this then and start going over the next stuff. We're pretty much already halfway done. Okay, so there are, uh, when we start talking about solubility, solubility. Okay, so solubility. Um, solubility is really just kind of, how do I want to say this? Uh, It depends on like the nature of the solute and the solvent. Um, so when a solvent or a solute is added to a solvent, these particles, they all mix together. Um, how do I want to put this? Solubility is basically just um, how much solute is able to be dissolved in a solvent. Okay, um, and so there are three types of solutions at different solubility levels. Okay, and so our first type of solution that we're gonna look at is an unsaturated solution okay so an unsaturated solution is going to be on our first level of solubility this is where okay essentially it contains less dissolved um, solute for a given temperature and pressure than can maximally, maximally, I don't know if that's a word, be dissolved. Okay, so basically, uh, or another way to put that is, contains less dissolved solute for a given temperature and pressure than can maximally be dissolved or than a saturated solution okay so essentially you can add more solute and it will dissolve okay over here the next one that we'll talk about is that saturated solution okay this contains the maximum amount of solute dissolved 
solute for a given temperature temper and pressure okay you cannot mix any more solute at or you cannot dissolve i should say dissolve because you can mix Okay, so you cannot mix any more solute at the given temperatures and pressures. And so you have unsaturated and saturated solutions. All right. Now, say you have a saturated solution and you want to add more solute to it. What are you going to do? You super saturate it. You do. What does that mean? you heat the solution up to make it e easier to I don't know, it makes it more soluble exactly ethan good job so then our final one is a super saturated solution okay super saturated solutions these essentially just contain more dissolved solute than a saturated solution at the same temperature. Okay, now what this is, is you have to heat up prior to cooling. Okay, so is anybody, so this is kind of one thing that I, I would do normally with you guys to kind of go over this stuff. I would, I would normally buy like a uh, pure leaf sweet tea, okay? And we'd look up how much sugar is in that, okay? Then we would take just regular black tea at a cold temperature and try and mix in that amount of sugar, okay? You cannot mix in that amount of sugar into a cold tea okay and have it all dissolve you'll have a lot of granulated sugar but if we look at the pure leaf teas those sweet teas pretty much any sweet tea that you can find on the shelves down at the town pump they all contain more sugar than you would be able to mix in at a normal uh, temperature so in order to make sweet tea what you have to do is make hot tea first okay mix in more sugar than you would normally be able to mix in at a lower temperature and then cool that down now once you've already mixed in the sugar okay that is going to cause that to be super saturated okay that sweet tea that you're drinking contains more sugar than would normally be able to be dissolved in uh, like room temperature tea or cold tea, okay? Like if you guys have ever made sun tea at home, I know my mom likes to do that during the summer. Uh, I always, when I was a little kid, would try and make, you know, sweet sun tea and try and mix it in. That stuff hardly dissolves any sugar, and I was always left with just a mess of sugar down at the bottom of the cup, okay? So uh, the hotter the solution is the more you can dissolve then when cooled solute remains dissolved okay so essentially it's cheating when you're working with saturated and unsaturated you're working at the same temperatures but with super saturated you need to heat it way up all right so you heat that way up then you mix all that solute in and then you'll cool it down okay is there any questions about any of that or are we good cool if we're good uh 
I'll go ahead and erase this unless Carly, are you taking notes still? I am, but I just took a picture of it, so you're good. We're good. Here, you can take a second. Just finish it up. Let me know when you're done. We just got one thing really left to talk about. It's a law, um, so it's an equation, but it's an easy one. Um, and then I'm gonna give you like one to two problems just working with that, okay? I'm good. You're good? Okay. So this has all so far been dealing with uh, the solubility of solutes, but they are solid solutes, okay? So now we gotta look at the solubility of gases, okay? So as temperature goes up in your solvent, okay, so let's just use like water, right? You're able to mix in more solute. That only works with, um, whatchamacallit, solids, okay? If you're using gases, it's the opposite, okay? The warmer the solvent, the less gas that can be um, dissolved into it, okay? So an example of this, um, in chemistry, not chemistry, biology last year, we learned about like carbon sinks and carbon storage. The ocean is the world's biggest carbon sink. It stores more carbon than ever or than anything else. However, uh, as of recently, it has started to be able to hold less and less carbon. This is due to the fact that the oceans are just getting ever so slightly warmer, okay? The warmer they get, the less carbon dioxide they can hold and the more carbon dioxide that gets released into the atmosphere, okay? And so that's just kind of an example of this. You can look at any gas, any gas falls into this. Uh, and this is because as you add more kinetic energy, okay? And remember you're adding kinetic energy whenever you add thermal energy to a solvent, you give gases more energy to escape, okay? So it allows them more energy to escape the solvent, all right? Um, so are there any questions about that, that solubility of gases right there? Because if not, we will talk about our law now, okay? The main thing that allows you to, so the main uh, factor that allows you to dissolve more gases into a solvent is pressure. Okay, so Ethan, this is where pressure comes in. So when you guys open up like a soda or something like that, you can hear the carbonation, right? You can hear that that is the dissolved gases escaping the solution because you have relieved the pressure, okay? If you leave something that is carbonated overnight, you'll come back and it'll be flat, okay? So that means when it's flat, essentially it has removed most, if not all of the um, carbonation. So all of the dissolved gases are no longer in that solution, okay? Um, does everybody know what I'm talking about there? Okay, so uh, the law that kind of looks at this is called Henry's law, Henry's law, okay? And this just states that at a given temperature, temperature, the solubility of gases um, 
in a liquid is directly proportional, not dipling, directly proportional to the pressure of the gas above the liquid. Okay, and so all that really looks like Henry's law, okay, is going to be S, and I'll put these in parentheses, S1, which stands for solubility, okay? Solubility one divided by pressure one is equal to solubility two divided by pressure two, okay? So essentially, if you have a given solubility and pressure, if you decrease the pressure, so if your pressure is less than your first pressure, you're gonna have lower solubility. If you increase the pressure, you'll have higher solubility, okay? And so we'll go ahead and do one problem like this, okay? So uh, if 85 or 0.85, so we have 0 0.85 grams of a gas at four atmospheres, okay? So we have atmospheres is pressure, okay? So pressure one is equal to 4.0 atmospheres, okay? Uh, is dissolved in one liter, okay, of water at 25 degrees Celsius, okay? So we know 25 degrees Celsius, but that's gonna remain constant, okay? So solubility, so our S1 is going to be 0.85 grams per one liter, okay? We're only given one liter. So we know that our grams or our uh, grams per liter, which is solubility, is going to be 8.5, shoot, uh, 0.85, okay? So 0.85 grams per liter at four atmospheres. So how much will dissolve into one liter of water? So we still have the same thing. So we're gonna be looking for S2. We don't know that one but our pressure two is going to become one atmosphere, okay? And so all we have to do here is just plug and chug. So we know S1, 0 0.85, okay, grams per liter times, or divided by, excuse me, four, okay? Is going to be equal to S2 divided by one atmosphere. Okay, our P2. So we just are going to have to go ahead and divide. Um, 0 0.2125. Well, yeah, 0 0.2125. But since it, we're since we're given, excuse me, this is going to be 0 0.40. Okay. 0.85 divided by four or 4.0 is 2. Point, what did you say, Ethan? Or 0. 0.2. 0. 0.215. 0. 0.12. Wait, 0. 0.2125. All right, I'm going to just go ahead and go with that because it sounds like those are the first two numbers. <laughs> All right? Yes. So that. Okay, essentially equals S2 divided by one atmosphere, okay? Then you can multiply both sides by one and it's just gonna be the same thing. So S2 is going to equal two or 0 0.21 grams per liter, okay? So Henry's law, pretty simple, all right? They're gonna give you a certain number of grams and a certain number of liters, and you're just gonna have to turn that into grams per liter, okay, to, fit, to get your solubility. And then they're gonna give you a pressure, uh, and then whether they give you another pressure or if they give you another solubility, you'll just have to figure out the other answer, okay? Are there any questions about these things?
or are we good? So they'll give you the grams to the problem and then you just put it in the equation? Yeah, so I mean, let me see right here. So I'm gonna give you like number on page 497, I'm gonna give you number 36 and 37. So number 36 says, if 0.55 grams of a gas dissolves in one liter of water, okay? So that means you're gonna have 0.55 grams per liter as your solubility one. At 20.0 kPa, so 20.0 kilopascals, that's your P1. So you already have your S1 and your P1. How much will dissolve at 110 kilopascals of pressure? So then it gives you your P2, so all you gotta solve for is your S2, okay? So that one's pretty easy. Uh, then 37, a gas has a solubility of 0.66 grams per liter at 10 atmospheres of pressure. Okay. Um, what pressure on a one liter sample that can, or what is the pressure on a one liter sample that contains 1.5 grams of gas? Okay. And so then that gives you your uh, S1 is 0.66 grams per liter. Your P1 is 10 atmospheres. Your S2 is 1.5 grams per liter. And then you have to solve for P2, okay? So there's a little bit of like, sometimes you have to turn grams into liters, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty simple. I can obviously answer any questions you guys might have about that. Um, but generally, I think you guys are pretty good at, at figuring this plug and chug stuff out. All right. Does anybody else have any questions? What page did you say that was on? Uh, I'll go ahead. And so it's page 497. Okay. I'll go ahead and stop. So, and I'll type it over here, 497, pay, or uh, 36, and 37. Okay, and then Joe, Anthony, Kyler, I'll send you guys the questions in a email. So just two problems is all it is? Just two problems. I mean, really, I'm not, I'm not that worried about this stuff. I think you guys understand the concepts of uh, dissolved, or saturated and unsaturated solutions. I think you guys understand um, this stuff. I just want to check, and I don't need you guys to do more than just two problems. So just do those two problems, and we'll be, we'll be good to go. Okay. So let me go ahead and type this out. Joe, Tyler. Okay, and if you don't have any questions, so again, 497, 36, and 37. You guys can go ahead and log off and start getting to work on those. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. See ya. All right, adios. See ya. Bye. Bye. See ya. See ya.
Tyler, you got questions or?